Hey there, Lickin' Riffers, how are you doing? Welcome to another awesome fingerstyle lesson right here on Lickin' Riff. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the magic of playing one chord with different bass notes. You can create beautiful music using this one simple trick. And it's technically not a trick because when you change the bass note, you actually change the chord itself, even though you're still playing the same notes. I'll try to explain it, uh, to explain it as we go along. I was going to say explore and explain at the same time, and I got exploring. So um, add that to your dictionary. So um, you can use simple chords for this, but I want to start with a unique type of chord. Put on two, five, and four on strings one, two, and three. Okay, so you get this. Okay? This crystalline chord. Now, when you play this chord, you can play 0, 2, 4 on the 6th and the 5th strings. Okay, and you can play the open D string as well, if you like. Also 4 on the D string, if you want, but we're talking about bass notes, and the D string is a borderline bass note as it is, so um, let's focus on strings 5 and 6. So we have 2, 5, and 4. And now you can arpeggiate the chord itself any way you like. The idea is to focus on the bass solo. Now, when you want to play the four, you play it using your second finger, which is free. Right? When you want to play the two, you bar the second fret. So you get the two on the E string as well. So you can start simple. Okay, using zero and four, and explore your options. Okay, but this can get tired really quickly, so you need to add the two. Okay, just randomly, because no matter what you do, as long as you keep a good rhythm, no matter what you do, it would sound good, because this is a really, really effective trick. Now, when you play the, um, the four on the fifth string, you get a sort of a C sharp minor at 11 chord. When you play the B bass, two on the fifth string, you get a B sus four. When you play the, Four on the sixth string, you get again that same uh, C sharp minor at eleven, but with a G sharp bass with the fifth on the bass, so it's a slash chord. It's C sharp minor at eleven slash G sharp, which is a really really impressive looking chord name. And when you play the F sharp bass, you can say again that you're playing B sus four over F sharp, or that you're playing an F sharp sus four with the seventh included, so you can call this F sharp seven sus four, which is also very impressive. Now, when you play the E, you're playing E sus two. When you're playing A, you're playing a really, really complicated chord name, so let me try to, you have the sixth here, okay, you have the ninth, and basically it's an A, 6 9 or a 9 13 okay so uh, it all depends on your um, choice of nomenclature there are several ways of naming chord so that's what's going on here Now you can do the same with a different chord, um, which looks almost the same. Uh, it's four and four on strings two and three. So you have zero, four, and four. Now, even though this is similar looking okay, to the previous chord, it's completely different um, because it's a completely different scale. So again, you can use the same bass notes, but this time two completely different results.
See? Now you can uh, use your first finger here to play around with the two and the zero on the E string. Okay, now the D string doesn't work. I played it on purpose because it's a different key and I wanted to demonstrate that you can't really play the same notes exactly. So leave the D string out of it this time. So what's going on here? Um, again, you have 0, 4, 4. I uh, recommend playing it with uh, the third finger and the fourth finger, okay? The pinky and the third finger. So you have uh, both fingers free. Okay, it's a little bit of a stretch, but you can do it. So when you have um, G sharp on the bass, right? It's kind of a G minor chord. And if you add two on the E string, you have G sharp minor seven. So when you have the open E string, you have G sharp minor add six, okay? um, or add 13. When you have C sharp, you have again that C sharp minor, but with the ninth okay? and the seventh. So it's C sharp minor seven add nine. When you have B, it's uh, B add 11 because it's, it has the sus4 note, but you also have the third, so it's B add 11. When you have F sharp, it's um, B add 11 over F sharp. Yeah, let's not get too uh, complicated here. When you have A, um, it's... Um, it's a modal kind of chord because, again, you have the ninth, but here you have the sharp 11. Okay, so it's A9 sharp 11. So uh, you're actually doing pre uh, pretty impressive things musically, okay, theoretically, if you're playing different bass notes. Okay, now, forgot the E. Um, when you have E, it's E major 7, okay? Um, so you can explore that, okay? With the same 0, 2, 4 on string 6 and 5. Now you have D, okay? Or D sus 2. And you can either use the right fingering with the fingers 1 and 3 on strings uh, 3 and 2, or you can play it with, string, uh, with fingers 2 and 3. Okay, on strings three and two, because then you have uh, the first finger and the fourth finger free, or if you prefer the original fingering, you have fingers two and four for soloing, whichever is more comfortable for you. Now, you have the D bass, of course. You have, uh, you have, okay, three to zero on the A string if you want a minor sound, or okay, four to zero if you want a major sound. And it's kind of the same thing on the sixth string. Okay, three two zero or four two zero, depending on which sound you want to get. So D is a pretty versatile chord for this uh, sort of tricky composition idea. Um, you can also, by the way, play the chord with uh, fingers one and four, and then you have uh, fingers two and three for soloing. But then you can't reach four. So it's either fingers one and three on the neck or two and three on the neck. Okay, so. Okay, now this kind of gives you uh, an A major sort of target. And when you use the three and two, sort of a bluesy minor sound. So you can explore this with different um, rhythm patterns. You can play the chord right along with the bass notes, uh, of course. You don't have to arpeggiate all the time. Okay? Or bass note, chord note, 
Um, you can create a lot of different music. I'm just showing you the technique itself um, and the idea behind it, okay? I don't want to impose any idea on you um, before you take this and try your own style, okay? Because uh, I have my own style, you have your own style. I just want to give you the overall scope of this uh, and the way this sounds. So again, we have two, five, four. patterns create different forms of music. Of course, rhythm is more important than anything else. So try different rhythmical approaches and you'll get completely different music. So that's the lesson for today. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? There's a ton of lessons right here on Lick and Riff and I upload a new one regularly. If you want to give something back, even though everything is for free and up for grabs, um, you can donate via Patreon or the donation button on the Lick and Riff website, whichever you choose. I thank you in advance for your generosity. Everything goes right back into Lick and Riff into making your guitar education. So I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.